guys, welcome back to another episode of the Whiskey Diaries. My name is Matt Lang and today we're going to be talking about Nikka Whiskey, in particular Takatsuru Pure Malt. Now this one is a delicious whiskey and it's the first blend that uh, then uh, Nikka started. Now a little bit of history why, and why the name Takatsuru is on the bottle and why this bottle is actually quite particular. Now Nikka Whiskey started in 1936 with the first distillery created in uh, Yoishi in the precinct of Hokkaido. The other distillery was Miyayiku and that was started in the 1960s. Uh, the Miyayiku distillery was a way of expanding because Nikkei was so popular that they needed to create more for the demand. And eventually they added another section to Miyayiku in which they produced uh, column spirits. Uh, column spirits or coming from the coffee stills, a type of uh, neutral grain spirits in which they get distilled to up to 96.2 degrees. Uh, ABV, which produces a really light spirit. Now, Yoishi in itself, they use a blend between three malts, which is non-pitted, non medium-pitted, and highly pitted. So Yoishi whiskey has actually a lot of pit in it. Now, not a lot, but like, bro, you're looking at probably six, seven, but it's noticeable in the whiskey. Now, Miyayiku on the other hand is a whiskey that produces really floral, uh, really like green tea, like really light spirits. Now, in Japan, um, you Japanese people don't share casks. They don't share much information between the distilleries themselves. Contrary to Scotland, in which Scotland, every, everybody, their mates and everybody shares everything. And they have a really close relationship with all, all distilleries. So, in Japan, to create a blended whiskey, which can hold like 3, 4, 10, 20 different whiskies, the distillery itself have to produce the whiskey themselves. So Yoshi in itself, yes, they do that, and they have so many co different combinations between barrels, uh, different types of malt, different types of malt barley, different type of pity levels, and all this. So I want to to create blends. Now Takatsuru, uh, the pure malt was the first blend that they created, and the reason why it's called Takatsuru is because it's a marriage between uh, Rita and Takatsuru. Takatsuru uh, started the distillery in 1936, but before that he was uh, doing an apprenticeship in Longbourn and Hazelburn in Scotland. Now, while he was in Campbellton in Hazelburn, he met a, uh, a young Scottish girl, her name was Rita, and together they moved to, to Japan to start Yoshi in the 1930s. After they started their Yoshi distillery, uh, they were together for a long time and they started Miyayiku uh, uh, together as well. Miyayiku was, Yoshi was created for Rita, Miyayiku was created for Taketsuru, so it's basically a representation of the love between Taketsuru and Rita. Um, so the pure malt is exactly what it says, <laughs> it's a, this is not a blended whiskey, this is a, a, a blended malt. The current relationship, uh, the current, uh, current, sorry, current uh, naming. But before this, uh, it wasn't a blended malt. It was what we used to call a vatted malt. A vatted malt means that this whiskey does not have any any uh, grain whiskey in it, but it's only single malt whiskey that goes into this. So it's a blend between Yoshi and Miyayiku. This is bottled at 43% ABV, that for a blended whiskey, this is actually quite high. Uh, most whiskeys, more blended whiskeys, let's just say the famous one like Johnny Walker or Shivers Regal, they're all between 39 to 40% ABV. So this one has a little bit more punch and it actually carries the flavors a lot more. It's actually a cracking blend. This goes for $70, $80 at Dan Murphy's or like in bottle shops and stuff online as well. Uh, it's a core range of Nika, so they, they haven't stopped producing this. The one that they have stopped producing is the 17 year old. The 17 year old goes for like $900. Uh, obviously for a, nine, for a 17 year old that's really really expensive, but it's absolutely d delicious. This pure malt doesn't have an H statement on it, so that means that it's part of the core range and you can find it, you can find it quite easily. Um, the reason why Nika uh, as I said before in previous vi videos as well, the reason why Nika started stopped uh, doing ages on the whiskies is because in around 19, uh, tw uh, 2014, the release uh, Japan released a soap opera of about 15 minutes long that is very popular in Japan in the mornings, uh, and it was about the relationship between Taketsuro and Rita uh, at the marriage and everything that they accomplished. So in 2015, Yoishi Distillery by itself got a million visitors. So around that era is when all the eight statements for all Nikas 
uh, basically got completely consumed and bought out. So you can't, they don't produce any H statements anymore uh, because they just don't have the stock. Uh, so this one is part of the core range and I will highly, highly recommend it. It's a delicious whiskey. Now this one, uh, as it's a blend between Yoshi and Yiko, you will see a mix between uh, cherry cask and American oak, which actually adds to the complexity of the whiskey. And for a blend, this is absolutely delicious. Yeah, you can definitely have um, the, 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 the flavor from Yoshi. There's a little bit of smoke, but very, very tiny. And then you get those floral notes that you get from, uh, from Yayiku, like more like green tea. Again, this is a great whiskey by itself, or like most Japanese whiskeys, to put it on a highball with soda water uh, and enjoy it like as a, as a refreshing uh, highball, highball drink. That is basically what they drink in Japan all the time. Anyway, thank you for listening, and hopefully you enjoy this one. Slanjiba.